welcome to Hamilton Talks. I am Larry Diani. Hamilton Talks is a community affairs program speaking with Hamiltonians who are well known and sometimes even those who may not be as well known but are moving the community forward. And my guest this evening is Bobby Asadorian. He certainly is very well known because he is making his third appearance on the show over the years. He's been in talking about different things. And, of course, he has his own show, or did, did have his own show. Maybe you have it again. We'll talk about that on this very cable. Uh, and he ran politically in the last municipal election. And we're going to talk about all of that, as well as some good advice for consumers, for residents who are looking to hire people to, the, to do work in their homes. Bobby, welcome to the show again. Thank you, Larry, for having me. Bobby, this is the third time you're on the show. Yes. Uh, people are going to think that we have a contract of some sort, <laughs> but you're just an interesting guy with good information. I've never paved your driveway, and I'm never going to. <laughs> <laughs> well, my driveway's paved. There you go. But there's a roof. In... No, no, I'm just teasing <laughs> about that. Well, Bobby, let, let's chat a little bit about, uh, about your business. First of all, tell people what it is you do, just in case there's someone out there who doesn't know. I'm a general contractor specializing in home renovations. We don't do commercial. We don't work for builders. I take issue with builders at times, as you may know in some of the media releases I've put out. I specialize with residential, and the interesting thing is even on my website, we have a list of minor services and larger services. In bullet point, the very first bullet on both items is listening. I'm the contractor that actually listens. You have to listen to the homeowner to understand what they want, what they need, what the issues might be, you know, what their family situation is, what time they're coming home from work, if they've got children involved, you know, there's going to be dust, there's going to be debris. It's very important to listen and to be patient. And I've been doing that now for 12 years. And the name of your company is? Triple R Inc. Triple R Inc. And you do have a website. People yes. can check you out. And uh, you carry a little license in your pocket. Yes, I do. That. I'm that? very, very proud of the license. That's my license. City of Hamilton, Master Building Repair. Yes. And your name and picture on that. Why is that license important? When I obtained this license about 13 years ago, I would punch a hole through it, put a little band through it, wear it around my neck, and show it to homeowners upon you know, visiting them at their home. And I started taking studies. Everybody was shocked with the license. They'd never heard of it. They'd never seen it. They'd never seen it. Initially, that's what got me into the media to be able to talk about the license and to advise homeowners. Further in 2009, I did more studies, and then I started a small radio show where I would talk about these issues. In Hamilton, I don't care who you're calling to your home, whether it's the roofer, the foundation guy, kitchen, basement, or bathroom. You call 100 tradespeople or contractors over, 85% are unlicensed. 15% are. Now, the license is the foundation for any home improvement project. I was on the board for three years, up until last year, helping to test and examine the potential contractors writing the exam. The municipality in Hamilton does a very, very good job in protecting the residents from the bad contractors. A contractor must spend two hours open book examination, section nine of the building code. Now, before you can even go in and write the test, Larry, you have to show police clearance. Now, can you imagine how much riffraff that's going to you know, push off to the side, as I estimate 85% of times. So the police clearance is important. The city will also check for a valid commercial liability insurance. Once you pass your test, you have the card. You pay for it annually. It's a small fee, but you're real. You're actually licensed. Those are the types of contractors homeowners should always be engaging with in business. All right, and we're going to talk about that. And so the license essentially is a guarantee that there's been a third-party impartial yes. assessor assessing your qualifications, your experience, your good business practices, and giving you a license when everything checks out, Yes, right? Very important. But Bobby, you've been in the business now for some time, but um, this past uh, November, or October, I guess, the election of October, the 27th of October, you decided to actually put your name on a ballot, like did a brick fall on your head? <laughs> what happened there? I had to try it, Larry, at least once. Right. I've done a lot of advocacy, advocacy work, helped a lot of people, I've been involved with the March of Dimes. At least in my mind's eye, I believe that I was paving the path the entire time to my candidacy, to become a city councillor, to essentially be able to help people on a larger scale. 
No, no regrets. You know, I went into this. I'm a big boy. Win, lose, or draw. It was a phenomenal experience. I knocked on nearly 15,000 doors. And in the hood, where I grew up, where I was born, near Canada, Victoria, you know, it's very special and dear to my heart, Ward 3. Incredible experience. I recommend it to everyone. Until you've run, you really shouldn't complain about your taxes. <laughs> you shouldn't complain about issues with the city, where, you know, bus lanes or what have you. If you want to complain, run. Show that you want to try to make a difference. So I can complain now. So, um, and of course, people will complain regardless. Oh, of that. exactly. But, but exactly. right, it, it does give you a different perspective. Um, and of course, I've run and lost, and I've run and won. I've run and won more times than I've run and lost. But, but the losing stings, though, because your name is on the ballot. There's a certain amount of ego involved in that because you're saying to people, here's who I am, here's what I stand for, support me. And sometimes they do, and that feels good. But sometimes they don't. How did you handle the, the loss? The In March, I went to Cuba. <laughs> you take the family, you go to Cuba, you recover. I'm a big boy, lick my wounds, recovered. Was it the rum or what? <laughs> the, the sun, the sun. The sun. We, we did have one of the coldest winters on record. Yeah, we did. So going to Cuba in March, came back, everything was great. So you said um, you were going to try it at least once. So you've tried it once. Is that it? I believe so. Why? I mean, they say never say never, but I'm pretty sure. I want to move on to new things. Right. You know, the renovations has been an incredible success. I may expand that, you know, I have thoughts in my mind, but, you know, it takes time to, you know, to create these things. I have thoughts and ideas of creating or somehow founding a home reno academy in Hamilton. Something as a, as a foundation, something to really, really clean up the industry once and for all. You know, I have a lot of ide other ideas in my mind. I'd rather not backtrack and do the same thing twice. So let's talk about that, because that certainly is a passion of yours. And in fact, you've brought a book that you've co-authored, um, A Contractor You Can Bring Home to Your Mom, is the title of the book. We've talked about this before. Uh, how many editions of this book? Uh, one edition. This is the, the one edition. And uh, Bobby Astorian and Trevor Bouchard. Yes. And they're both of you are. Um, it looks like a, a, uh, an ad for Home Alone or, or, <laughs> uh, or something. Um, so tell us about Trevor, first of all, your co-author. Trevor is a genius. Uh, Trevor is a very smart individual. He owns quickcontractors.com. It's a quality assurance company. It says an online entity where you would go to try to find contractors. Now, again, you know, you have to take everything with a grain of salt. Nobody wants to guarantee anything these days. So the end result is homeowners need to do their own, you know, checks and balances. But essentially, on Trevor's website, you can be a member. Uh, he does pre-screen to some degree. We met uh, back in 2005. I was a member, and at that time, uh, both of us were allowed to appear as guests on CH Morning Live. That's sort of where I got my first, you know, tickling sensation with the media. And then years later, did radio. And then, of course, from that, it evolved my half-hour home improvement show. But the book was interesting because Trevor always had an attachment with the Ontario March of Dimes. Annually, he would host golf tournaments. I became involved with Trevor and the joint venture of the book. All proceeds go to the March of Dimes. I mean, it's eighteen dollars and forty cents. Trevor and I make nothing off the book. It costs us about seventy cents each in the printing costs, and everything goes to the March of Dimes. Isn't Very passionate good? about that. So it it's an altruistic uh, as well as an informative enterprise on your on your part. Yes. But one of the themes whenever we talk, uh, Bobby, is the bad contractors. Yes. The the fly by nighters who are out there. Uh, who are ready to prey on the unsuspecting and often uninformed homeowner uh, with all thumbs like me, that would describe me. Uh, I, I, I'd like to think that I do have some talents, but, but certainly home renovations and things of that nature may not be among them. Uh, and of course, I have to rely on people. And so when I go out and whether I need a roof job done or a driveway paved or whatever work that needs... A, a, a dryer fixed or refrigerator fixed, I, rel I get on the phone book or my Rolodex and, and I have to rely on the expertise of others. And so when they come in and they say to me, you know, the thingamajig needs replacement, mm -hmm. I'm at a loss. I have to take his word because I'm not even sure what a thingamajig is and if it needs <laughs> replacing, so be it. How much will it cost is the question I ask and then we decide on going for it. What am I doing wrong when I engage people in that way? Well, it almost sounds like car mechanics. You know, there's a lot of issues there with your car service. Ministry of Consumer Services, number two complaint 
is about home renovation contractors. And number one is telemarketers. You can imagine how many people hate us as contractors or how many issues there are. Larry, we all have to rely on somebody, but I, I like to teach people or at least advocate for them to rely, to be smart as they're relying on somebody. We can't do everything. People have to understand the biggest key is the license. Now, many have argued with me in this and said, oh, Bob, that's not going to guarantee perfect workmanship. <clears throat> the license, nothing's a guarantee, but the license is the safest and best spot to start. In Ontario, only the high-end trades, for example, you know, your gas workers, your electricians, they're regulated and licensed by the province. Now, we've talked about this before, and I've always taken issue with the province because they sort of disrespect us, the general contractors or the renovators. I can come in your home and work on 101 items. The electrician's going to come in, all he's going to do is wiring. He's not going to paint or fix your drywall. However, the province regulates him and licenses him. Now, the province leaves the contractor licensing to all the municipalities. So it's very scattery across Ontario. Hamilton has the master building repair license. Brantford has it. Burlington hasn't had it for 12 years. So it varies throughout the cities. So homeowners, whatever city you're living in, call, find out if the license is required. Now, people complain all the time they don't have time, and yet they waste hours and hours of time on the phone, or they're calling on these contractors over when indeed they're not licensed. So initially, find out, you know, get a list of a couple of companies, contractors, call the city, 546-2424, they're there to help. Find out if the contractor is licensed. That is the most important first critical step. Next, of course, you want references. I have always advocated for at least a dozen references because these crooks are pretty good at faking two or three fake references. If you want to have at least a dozen, if it's a big project, thinking of paving the driveway, the backyard, or a full basement, not only a paper reference, ask this supposedly big, big, um, you know, big shot contractor that's done all these great jobs, ask them if you can go visit a past job that resembles yours. Now you want to find out, is he invested in the community? Is he a member of the Better Business Bureau? Is he a member of the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce? Recently on CH, which is, you know, we spoke about through the email, that crook that uh, robbed six homeowners, the entire time he was doing that, for months preceding that, he was red flagged on the BBB. Well, speaking of red flags, and I want to talk about this oh, specific yes, case. Oh, yes, yes. But speaking of red flags, you there, there's actually a, a checklist that you've put together for yes. homeowners. Yes, And maybe we can show that now because it's a checklist that raises these red flags and should alert any of us who are about to engage someone and spend good money uh, to potential problems. Let's have a look at them, maybe even talk about them. And here we go. The red flags there on the screen now, uh, Bobby, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, uh, but yes. Um, so well, the so first fun. one, I happen to be working in the neighborhood. That's probably the biggest scam. And that's most often perpetrated on seniors. See, these, these criminals, Larry, they're not stupid. They're very smart. They know seniors are easily accessible. They're available, but they're home. They're retired. That's why they're seniors. So they'll be knocking on doors, and they'll be trying to get money out of them. Most often, you know, seniors come from a day and age where you didn't need the double deadbolt on the doors, where you could just make a handshake. So they solicit the people, and they tell them, oh, we see your chimney has an issue, or your driveway's got an issue, or your eavesdrop's leaking. If they come unsolicited to the home, don't ever hire them. You know, at the worst, just ask them to leave the literature, then use the literature to look, and look them up. You know, other items, handshake agreements. I mean, you want to make certain that it's in writing. It's absolutely critical that you get everything in writing. Today's special only must be paid in cash. Again, that's an issue. Contractors that want to start immediately. Now, again, everybody's in a rush. People call me all the time, and I laugh when they call me on a Wednesday asking if I can start a full-blown basement renovation on Friday <laughs> with the wet bar, with the two bedrooms, with the rec room. And they get upset when I say you're going to have to wait six to eight weeks. The fellow that's most often going to just leap off the couch and start tomorrow, he must be sitting at home playing video games all day. <laughs> you know, these are bums, Larry. There's a big problem with home renovations with separating the real guys, the pros, from the bums. And there's some more. Cell phone and not only a landline. Now I get a lot of uh, you know bump back or kickback on that one from some other contractor friends I have. Now you know everybody wants to save a buck. They don't want to spend on a landline and also have a cell phone. They just want to use the cell phone. But again, this is about finding a contractor that's invested in himself as a business. 
99% of the times, these crooks, these people that are ripping people off, they're only operating through a cell phone. That time's a prepaid one, and they get rid of it. So they've got your deposit, and there goes the phone. You know, if they've got a landline, and I'm not saying they have to have, you know, a big office on an eighth floor. The, home, the office can be at home, but having a landline and then also having a secondary cell phone, they're a little more established, I think a little more reputable. Uh, you know, I might take some exception with a cell phone, but only because it's so prolific these days that most people do their business over the cell phone. But I take your point that if you have an Especially established with the office... Especially with yeah. the prepaids and they well, can throw it Well, prepaid is an issue. I don't know why anybody prepays anything, quite frankly, um, uh, because any, any work that I've ever had done is based upon completion. Yes. Now, I, I get it that sometimes you have to buy equipment, but most contractors of any repute, I would say, understand that, and they, you know, they will buy those roof shingles and then give you the bill at the end uh, once exactly. the work is done. Exactly. You have to be careful. Before handing your hard-earned money over, make certain to research them. Another thing is the internet, the power of Google. I mean, I always tell homeowners this. You can find so much dirt or so many potential red flags about somebody on the internet. Not only the contractor's company name, but also their personal name. Run it through Google, be surprised what you'll find. If the people that were spoken about on the news a few weeks ago, the people, the sales, the homeowners that got ripped off, if they'd have looked up that crook, they would have found out that he was red flagged on the BBB. Right to this moment, he's red flagged. And yet one homeowner handed the over... BBB, of course, is better. Better Business Bureau, yes. Right. One homeowner, and this was the saddest one of the group of six, he yeah, borrowed... Let's, before you tell that yes. story, let, let's indicate that this is a story that was actually featured on CHTV. Yes, correct. And uh, one of the individuals who was, who was duped uh, was a former reporter with yes, CHTV, Fred Anderton, let's yes. say it, because he, he volunteered that information. And, uh, and I'm he, glad he did, because he's trying to open people's eyes. Right. And I'm glad he came forward. Right. And so he and a number of other people uh, fell prey. What exactly happened? Well, again, I don't want to, I shouldn't call him a contractor. Let's stick, it also starts with a C, let's just call him crook. This fellow, at, right at the moment, he's on Kijiji. So even after what he did to those Amazing. six homeowners... He is actually advertising himself on Kijiji. Well, the CHCH story ended with them showing that he is on Kijiji at this very moment. So I believe it started with him working for one homeowner in a survey or a neighborhood. All of a sudden, he was working for six, you know, including Mr. Anderton. Now, none of the jobs are completed. You know, at various stages they were left. The worst part was the one homeowner who borrowed $8,500 on his line of credit to give this crook as a deposit. Okay. Gone. Well, you know, um, has he ever been convicted? Uh, maybe we shouldn't be calling him a crook. Well, not mentioning his name. but <laughs> I know, but, but... It just hurts to call him a contractor. It hurts to uh, call him a contractor. I, I take your point, but just to make no, very clear... No, I understand. I understand. He, uh, to our knowledge, he's never been no, no, that's tr true. charged, let that's alone true. convicted. That's and true. So, but, but certainly the residents who are complaining feel that their money was taken well, for They're very reason. upset. Yeah. They're very upset. Some of the people gave money they had in their savings. Other people, well, one gentleman, $8,500, took it out of his line of credit, gave it to this pretend contractor, the money's gone. Now, So how do you get your money back? Because you've got an interesting take well, on that. Well, he can't be arrested. Now, this individual... Yeah, is, talk about that, the difference between fraud and, yes, and shoddy work. Yes, but again, I'm not a lawyer, but I, I, I watch the program, and it makes sense with case law. If you just take somebody's money and you don't initiate or begin or start the project at all, the cops will go on. The police will arrest you. However, if you begin the job, deliver some shingles, or start forming for the steps as you know, showed on the news broadcast, and then take off, and excuse after excuse after excuse, it now becomes a civil matter. I know these homeowners, they definitely call the police. Many people call the police. Once the police find out what's happened, they will not arrest, not in that particular case because the person, the entity being a contractor or the business, attempted to engage the, trend, the transaction by initiating the work. Now, these people are very smart, Larry. They're very smart. Years ago on this very network, the title was Hamilton Roofer Arrested. I was interviewed by Jason Farr. That roofer for about two years was just taking the deposits. He dropped off a skid of shingles, never touched them. Homeowners calling, calling, maybe with some kind of prepaid cell phone again. He would, you know, dispose of it. They would call the authorities. The police could not arrest because he showed an intent. He delivered the shingles. 
after the second year, he stopped delivering the shingles. In some instances, he was arrested. I was on this network talking about it with uh, Jason Farr at the time. Do these people know the law? They know how to work around the law. You know, it's amazing that people would go to that extent to try to make a buck. Everybody needs to make a living. I get that. Uh, but when you have to be so creative in your deception, uh, it's almost easier to do the work, isn't it? It should so, be. But are these people not qualified to do the work? Well, what, 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 have, what goes on in their minds? Do, do you, do, have you ever met somebody actually like this who dupes? Oh, I've met, dupes? I've, I've met them. So what goes through everything? I mean, are they just bad people or, or do they get overwhelmed by the work? What is it? I mean, sometimes, see, they don't, sometimes they're not able to write the exam. The time that I was on the trade exam board for the city of Hamilton, you know, it was very interesting because you cannot write the exam unless you provide a police clearance. Now, other board members, and this never came about while I was there, but it depends on the extent of the criminal past charges, they might give some leniency. But I extrapolate easily enough then that if these people, they must have bad records. You cannot go in and even write the exam. So maybe there has to be some leniency there. But then again, though, the city has to weigh it both ways. Because these people are going to be working in your home. You've got valuables. You've got children. So to what extent of criminal past behavior should be allowed or excluded in order for them to be allowed to obtain the license? You know, that's an issue there. There absolutely is an issue there. There's no question about that. And, of course, the poor individuals... Like the senior citizen who's up $8,500 yes. on work that he was supposed to get but got nothing. It's uh, a lot of money. I mean, it's, it's a lot of money. It, it, it makes you very sad for, for those individuals. And from what you're saying is that there isn't a, an easy recourse uh, other than through the courts and who knows how long that takes. you got to hire so a lawyer. Quite a process. you got to spend more money to try to get some money. And then if these people are long gone... Uh, then uh, that's another problem well, as well. Well, there's no debtor's jail in Canada. Right. You can get a conviction against them, but if they don't have any money to pay, what are you going to do? Right. The other aspect that, that impressed me, or at least made me think, um, was that insurance is often not carried by these workmen, uh, by these tradesmen who come. And even if they're good, even yes. if they do, do the work that they're supposed to do, if they're not licensed or insured, who has the liability? So, say I hire somebody to do my roof, and God forbid he happens to fall off, and he has no insurance. Who has the liability? He does, of course, right? You do. Oh my God, why? Well, let's break it down. There's two types of insurances. Well, we started starting with injury. There's a workplace safe insurance board coverage. So these contractors, you know, the owner of the company, he must have, it's the law. If he has employees, he must be registered with the WSIB, and pay a premium based on earnings and salary for his employees. Now, if I'm working in your home, and you know, one of my employees are hurt, and I have workplace safety insurance board coverage, it's fine. If I don't have the coverage, somebody's got to pay for their injuries. In most cases, they'll sue you as the homeowner, and then it would fall on your homeowner's insurance, which is not right. That's not where it should fall. The other issue is uh, commercial contractors' liability insurance. So now I come into your home, I'm working in your home, I'm doing something on the exterior. I've got a tall three-story ladder. It happens to fall over and crash through your neighbor's vehicle. Talk about a complication of events now. The company should always have the commercial liability insurance to cover damages that happen, or else it's going to be left to the homeowner. So if you owe me, it's a $1,000 job, and I cost $6,000 damage to your home or property, more than likely the contractor is just going to take off. Otherwise, he's very honorable and dig deep into his pockets and pay for it up front. So that's one of the things the city always checks upon when you go in the right examination. You have to sign a declaration that you have commercial liability insurance. The city doesn't get involved with the WSIB because they don't really know you're starting out. They don't know if you have employees or not. It's one thing the city doesn't look into. Bobby, what about the whole issue of the underground economy? Uh, the fact that... You know, look, all of us um, never have enough money to do all the things that we want, and we're always looking to save. And so you cut me a better deal than the other guy, and if you do it for cash, uh, then I don't have to pay taxes, which is money out of my pocket. Uh, and there's a whole morality about that. I get that. But I bet you it happens more times than not. Um, what about that aspect? Well, you've been almost tied into cash job, also no permits, no inspections. 
electrical violations, the electrical won't be inspected, uh, the basement will be done illegally, and of course it's cash. E everything goes together there. It's almost non-existent where it's a cash job, but all inspections were performed and the job's above par. So the homeowners, they get in the bed with these crooks, they don't complain, but when they run off and there's an issue, then they complain to the city. So it's very interesting. City gets these calls every day of every week. It, it sounds to me that... When it turns sour, the well, people that's complain. The point. It sounds to me that, that you know, the old adage, uh, you get what you pay for, uh, is absolutely true and people need to do their due diligence before they hire people even if do a simple job as maybe repainting your house or some rooms in your house or restaining your deck and, and all of that. Um, Bobby, thank you for coming on the program again. Well, thank you uh, for having me. Highlighting you. these issues, their lessons that we need to ingrain in people. Good luck and hope to see you on the air. Thank you, Larry. Uh, next year as well. Yes. We have been in conversation with Bobby Asadorian, master contractor in the city, Triple R Inc. Contracting. And uh, Bobby, of course, can be reached uh, by checking out his website. Join us next week when we're going to be in conversation with Ian Pettigrew, um, a photographer from the city, uh, who will have some very interesting things to say, show, and tell. See you then.